Okay, perfect. You're live. All right, we can go ahead and get started. Welcome to this session of uh, WordCamp, using WordPress to help your business, and if you happen to be in the development business, how to help your client soar. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is Richard, my uh, last name is Ruth, and I have been an entrepreneur using WordPress for many, many years as an end user primarily, but I have since leveraged some of that experience as an end user in the last year to get back into development. I originally had a degree in computer science and I used to do web development 20, 25 years ago. Got out of it, got sidetracked in this career called law and started to get back in other business ventures and now back into the work process development. So I had kind of some experience now from both sides. But primarily, for many years, it was from the end user perspective. And from that perspective, I've gotten uh, a lot of observation over the years on what made WordPress work for us. And then now from the development side, what can developers do to work with clients to help them achieve their business goals? Because ultimately that's what we want to do with WordPress. First of all, the obligatory why WordPress for business. I'm sure this information is shared countless numbers of times. But just to reiterate why we love WordPress so much, about 30% of all websites use WordPress, but more notably, 25% of the top 10,000 websites use WordPress, including some very big name brands such as New York Times, CNN, Best Buy, etc. Thousands of plugins and themes means low cost extensibility. In other words, you don't have to custom program every single feature that you want. That becomes very important if you're a small business um, looking to add functionality to your website to make it like the big players in the market that I just mentioned without having to pay a developer tens of thousands of dollars to get that functionality. It's accessible, it's responsive, of course there are always exceptions to the rule when we deal with themes and whatnot, but for the most part, if you're careful about what you're doing, um, it's accessible, responsive, and more important, you have a worldwide support base. There's a tremendous support structure with conferences, resources, it's like we're out here. Um, many developers are familiar with WordPress and its extensibility, so it's easy to find help when you need it. There are tutorials on YouTube, just a tremendous amount of support if you're building a site based on WordPress. And trust me, over the years, I have found that support invaluable for what we are trying to do. One of the key deals, and I've had personal experience with this, and now when I deal with certain clients, some of the same questions always come up. Why do we want, if we're building a business, especially if we're a startup, why don't we just go free? There's Weebly, there's Wix. There's lots of places out there where we can just do something for free. Why do we need you? Why do we need to deal with this fairly complicated content management system called WordPress? We'll just go on Wix. Well, first of all, free versus freedom. It's not a political phrase, although I'm sure lots of politicians use that same concept, but in the sense of web development, in business development, free doesn't necessarily imply freedom. As a matter of fact, usually it means the opposite. You get what you pay for. So something that is free is usually going to be highly restrictive in terms of freedom to do what you want. And it kind of gets to the last point. Is it really free? Because what you find is the more functionality and extensibility that you want, it's no longer free, and you're probably going to end up paying more than what you might be able to get with regular WordPress. More importantly, especially as a business owner, who owns your website, your content, your data, ultimately your future? What happens if a Wix disappears tomorrow or a Weebly disappears tomorrow? What if they are hacked? What if they are brought down? What if Worst case scenario, they disappear entirely. What happens to your business, to your organization? 
Its online identity is gone. If you're in the e-commerce business, your sales and revenue are gone in a flash. Because really truly, to a large extent, you don't own it. Someone else owns it. All we have to do these days is look at some of the uh, news involving Facebook. Who owns your data? Who owns your online identity? And you don't realize that when you sign up for some of these free website services, you really don't own very much. And if they disappear, you disappear, at least in terms of your online presence. And as we'll get into the presentation a little bit later, that actually kind of sort of happened to me, which is why absolutely never again will rely on third-party proprietary software for anything that my businesses do. Now you saw on the opening slide, I had some business badges down there. Two of my biggest online businesses are what we call Navy Pictures and Warbirds for Up. Uh, we sell a lot of apparel, a lot of uh, memorabilia, collectibles, custom-made items for veterans of various service branches. Both here in the United States, we also sell it to some of the allied countries and veterans in Europe. We do six figures a year in sales. Our online presence is extremely important. We do not have a brick and mortar establishment. We do in terms of manufacturing our own products. But we don't actually have a storefront. Everything we sell is sold online. So if online disappears, our business is too. So it's extremely important to us, and we've had some bad experiences which have steered us in the work process, and I'll explain them. What about your appearance to the outside world? The chances are on these free websites, everyone knows it's free. Do you really value your business that much to be using a free website? What does it show about your faith and confidence in your business that you're using a free website? Appearance does matter, and some people will pick up on that. And so ultimately, when you're using a free website builder, you're living in a world with limits. And some of those limits are extremely important. So, what's my journey? It's business owner, what I call the promised land of WordPress. Not, you know, when people say, oh, you know, am I going to make a mistake with WordPress? I don't really know a whole lot about WordPress. I'm just going to stumble along the way. Hey, we've all been there. And that's okay, because that's part of the process to get to where you want to go. And my story? Wow. The ancient startup days. Do it yourself extravaganza. See, I have a computer science major way back before the internet was actually a big thing. So when it first started coming around, HTML was starting to come into vogue, but we were using things like front page and stuff like that. So I had these business ideas to create this, you know, maybe pictures business, which was the first business I created. And I thought, okay, I have to sell products. But I don't have a whole lot of money up front. I have five kids. They suck all the money. Where do I get the money? I don't really have the money to hire a developer right now. I have a computer science degree. Why do I need a developer? So I get a front page, and I build myself what I would call a proof of concept website. And I use Dreamweaver in combination with front page. Lots of HTML, what was CSS? Ah, that looks complicated. I'm gonna leave off CSS. Why deal with CSS when I can deal with frames? Frames give me everything that I want. Why do I have to mess with CSS? And wow. Talk about making e-commerce hard. I mean, if I sell a shirt, I have different sizes, I have two different colors, and I had two different font logo options. So every single product I sold ended up having a grid system where you had to match up your color, your logo, and your size. But with frames, it was perfect. So I thought. It was very hard to scale. Every single product I added, you ended up having to adjust 20 different frames. It wasn't exactly the most fun thing in the world, adding a new product. But the bottom line is it proved the concept. At some point I realized, you know what, we're going to make it to the bigger league. 
got to do something about this. We've got to invest in a true e-commerce system. However, at the time, there weren't a whole lot of options at that point because the e-commerce system was still very, very, very expensive. So we go to the Middle Ages. In the beginning, the Middle Ages were great. The period of enlightenment. We're discovering new machines, new scientific concepts. In my case, we switched to a proprietary shopping cart system, which was a pinnacle cart at the time. And it was great. I loved it. Oh my goodness, we finally had a professional website that was e-commerce enabled. It actually looked like one of these huge, very complicated, developer-made websites. And business began to soar, and products became easier to add. But, as is the case with many proprietary third-party packages, you're at the mercy of how well they support those features. The same way with free website builders, how well do they add some of the latest trends and some of the latest features? It's the same with shopping cart system. When Google Merchant Feed changes their protocols for getting products listed, what happens if your shopping cart system doesn't yet support it? You find yourself unable to take advantage of the Google Merchant Center feed. So we needed to upgrade. Upgrade absolutely crash the website. The developer and I spent days trying to figure this out. Mind you, the business is down this entire period of time. We're losing thousands of dollars a day. It's gone. We cannot get it to work. And it was at that point that I realized when you put your future and your business in the hands of third party proprietary packages, it can disappear in a flash. So, what do we go and do from there? I call it the modern fast times if we're press high. I guess that's showing my age a little bit without a little phrase. We switched to WordPress and WooCommerce system. And it wasn't easy. I'm not going to tell you that it was easy business owner and tried to make a switch to something very complicated with all of the power. Especially when you haven't used WordPress before. It was a very steep learning curve. And we had to do it as fast as possible because, mind you, our website continues to be down. But that learning curve, especially looking back, so very worth it. It was the best decision we ever made switching to WordPress and WooCommerce because now we have control over our system. When I researched WooCommerce, and I saw who was all using it, in fact, it was to a large extent open source, Harley Davidson, where I'm from Milwaukee, Harley Davidson uses it. Of course it's got to be great if Harley Davidson is using it. And so, the more we researched it, the more we said, this is going to be an excellent solution based on WordPress. I wasn't too familiar with WordPress at the time. It seemed very complicated. Like I said, wow. Deep learning curve. There still is a learning curve as we figure this out years and years and years later. But it is fantastic. And things like the plugins like Yoast. You use the Yoast plugin, you probably know what I mean. I find it amazing. I can go into Google for each individual product to find myself usually number one on the product ranking on Google organically. And that is all thanks to some of the pointers that Yoast gives us when we create a product try and optimize it for SEO. Some of the plugins that we use that are available with WordPress and WooCommerce for our business have just been fantastic. So what are some of my observations to how to successfully integrate WordPress and your business? And if you're a developer, how can you make another business successful with integration of WordPress? First and foremost, number one rule, I kind of heard it mentioned too in that uh, session at 3 o'clock, but knowledge is power. First of all, you have to know your own business, or if you're a developer, your client's business. I mean, truly know it. What is your best selling item? How do those items sell? What service are you offering? 
How is the best way to present that service? What are your competitive advantages and disadvantages in your business? Kind of a functional analysis and a competitive analysis of your own business practices and market opportunities. Because unless you know how your business is going to work and how it's going to run, you're not going to be able to really optimize your WordPress website <coughs> to best accomplish your business goals. You need to know your customers, your clients' customers, if you're involved. And this is extremely important, too, because not every business's customers are alike, obviously. We say it, but do we truly understand it? i give you a case in point. The vast bulk of our customers are over 50 years of age. When we hear a lot of talk about how WordPress and websites are becoming mobile-friendly at the expense sometimes of desktop, mobile first, well, yeah, that's going to work for most businesses. That's what they should be focused on. But what if your customers are still lagging on mobile? Desktop is still important and primary for you in that situation. And when I look at the analytics, I see 75% of my customers are coming to us from desktop sites. That defies the trend. But why is that? Because the vast bulk of our customers are over 50, but in fact, the majority are over 65 years of age. I shudder to think what internet browsers are trying to use our site on, but they're still on desktop. And so sometimes when you're designing your site, you're structuring your site, it's important to know what is your customer and where is that customer coming from. They're not interested in all the bells and whistles. They're interested in, can I find my product? Can I find what I want? On the flip side, if your audience is younger or towards particular interest, well, that's going to matter in terms of how you structure your site and design your site as well. So know your customers. Know your business. Know your competition. What is your competition doing? Take a look at your competition website. What are they doing and what can you take advantage of in terms of what they are not doing? For example, when I look at Navy Pictures and I look at Warburst Forever, Warburst Forever sells apparel and memorabilia to the aviation enthusiast. Obviously, Navy veterans are the customers of Navy Pictures of merchandise. We have competitors. Every business has competitors. How do you turn your website into a competitive advantage, especially using the power of WordPress? You take a look at what they're doing. And one of the things that we know is in terms of competitive opportunity for us, two things actually. First of all, a lot of our competitors are not using WordPress driven sites. They're still using what I would call the 1990s version, something that would look like it was still made in a software package like front page. But everything is on one page. We can do a hat. We can offer you an embroidered hat of your ship. And I'll give a few samples. All on one page. What we've done in conjunction with WooCommerce, we've been able to take every single hat we offer and create a separate product page. They can see the specific graphic they are going to get on their hat by creating an individual product. With WooCommerce, it becomes easy. You can duplicate products over and over, we're just changing some of the text and changing the graphic, the product image. But it's very easy to scale your product with something like WooCommerce. Or as I know, hey, they're relying on frames. I know, I've been there. Not that easy to add new products that way. And so there is a competitive advantage that you get with WordPress over what your competitors are doing simply because of the features and functionality. The second thing, with WooCommerce being able to add add-ons and attributes, we can offer personalization on the hands very easy. There is nothing a veteran loves better than showing what they served on, but also the years and the rate and the rank. They love it. That is the source of their identity, even years after they have retired from the service or been discharged. They love putting their information out there. What better way to get their business, to make them feel proud of what they've done, than to put that information on the hand. So by using some of the features and accessibility functionality of WordPress and WooCommerce, we can offer personalization. Something the 
competitors aren't doing. By looking at your competition in comparison with what WordPress can do, you can get competitive advantages way above and beyond them, just using what's already available to you. I always like to say, this goes back to my computer science days. The best way to make your website work for you and work for us is to practice what I would say is sound systems analysis principles. You know, when you do systems analysis, you're taking a look at you know, what functionality can we incorporate into our IT system, what are ways we can improve our IT system, what are our, some of our business pain points that we can solve with technology, et cetera, et cetera. When you go through systems analysis principles, you're identifying that. Well, the same concepts apply very well to your WordPress website and how it integrates into your greater business. What are some of the things that we can do with our website, take advantage of things? to help with goods where we want to go, to differentiate ourselves in the market, et cetera, et cetera. And think outside the box. When I work with a few clients now, like I said, when I've started to get into the development side, I get with a few clients, especially clients that have worked with some of these free website builders. I say, you know, you have events. For example, I work with an organization called Buto Encounters in Oslo, Norway. My wife has uh, lived there for 20-some years, so I get a lot of clients from the European side. And the Bhutan Hall is a specific form of Japanese dance. And I looked, and they were using a free website builder. They have a bench. I said, you know, there's a plugin, a very good plugin for WordPress to help manage events. It connects in with a service like Eventbrite, where you can provide tickets to this event. You can gather email addresses to let them know future events. There's a lot of extensibilities to a WordPress website that could benefit your organization. Oh, really? Because they're not seeing that on the free website. They think that it would be way too complicated and way outside the budget to ever be able to afford functionality like that. And in reality, it's free. Not granted you can get the premium add-ons to it. But the functionality they required was free. And with about two hours of training, wow! Now we can actually promote our events, advertise our events, create a calendar of events on our website, stuff they had never been able to do before. So by thinking outside the box, you'd be amazed at what you can add to your website, if not free, or perhaps a very low cost. Structure and appearance. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. I'm a living, breathing example of a website that does not necessarily have to be 100% perfect in front of the appearance. My website, for Navy Pictures and Warbirds Forever, I can tell you right now, I'm never going to win any of those fancy art awards that they give out from time to time on a website. Doesn't matter to me, because what I want to make sure first and foremost is that it's a structure that my customers can follow. Can they find what they want? Is the information they need easy to find on different devices? First and foremost, that's what you want. You want them to be able to find the information. You know, even little things sometimes. I know we can get trendy with certain design concepts and principles. A little magnifying glass for search. If we use websites a lot, we all understand the magnifying glass from the search. Surprise, how often I get, or used to get, questions. I don't find a search feature on your website. It's the magnifying glass. Oh, really? Because that particular customer base is not used to a magnifying glass as a search. So, we do. We have a searcher. Search box. Search for your product box in the sidebar, so that it is very apparent that not having to rely on some trendy design, emoticon, feature, icon, whatever, to mean something, they find it very specifically. Does the appearance of your site fit your business? There's a lot of themes out there, some of us have preferences for theme providers, etc. The point is, does it fit image? that you're trying to create 
with your site. I always believe that your, uh, your website is part of the story, it's part of your identity. Um, when they look at your site, they get the feel about what you're about. Your values, your culture. There's a great show, I believe it's on Netflix, it could be on Hulu. But it's American Small Business, Small Business of America, something like that. And it's put on by Amanda Brinkman of Deluxe up there in Minnesota, and Robert Hertzberg, Shark Tank guy. And the two of them go and pick some small town in America, and they try to revive the small town. And one of the things that they focus heavily on is the websites that they design for their clients in the small town. And one of the things that I love about that show is when they profile the finished websites for their clients is how well the websites portray the culture and the value of those small businesses. If it's a barber shop from the 1850s in a small town, it's amazing how they capture the essence of that in their website. So whatever you're using in terms of themes or whatnot, don't just stick with the generic thing that everybody is using. Tell the story. Try and find something, found structures, appearance. Try and find some way to capture their culture and their story. Let the structure of your website easily flow, especially in e-commerce. Can they drill down and find what you want? Um, when we're dealing with our customer base, we kind of have to make it simple for them. But they may not be familiar with ways to navigate a website, fancy ways, etc. So we leave those breadcrumbs for them be able to continue and drill down to what they're looking for. That works for us. A different structure is going to be different for any other business. So, it doesn't flow. What are the pain points for a user? You know, when you go through and you try and simulate, for example, an e-commerce, an order from your customer standpoint, don't look at it from your standpoint to say, you know your site, you know how things work, you probably used a whole bunch of other sites, you developed a site, you know how your site works. Of course it's going to be easy for you. Try and put yourself in the shoes of a customer that is not familiar at all with how this works. Can they find what they're looking for? Is it something that's easy for them? Are there points where they are confused? You know, one of the things for us sometimes is the shopping cart system. They get there, and they want to continue shopping, and they get back to where they were, because maybe they want to order the same type of product in a different size or color, so they have to go all the way back to the beginning, and then refine the product. Sometimes you have to tinker to eliminate some of those pain points for the user, because otherwise you'll find that they may abandon the cart, or they may not order other things that they would much rather have ordered. So really focus on some of those pain points in your WordPress website as it relates to your business purpose. And then of course, generally speaking, is the website fully optimized for your business? Are you taking advantage of everything that that WordPress website has to offer? The functionality, the features, blog content, etc. Is it really something that's living and breathing and working for your business or is it just another fancy brochure? that you could have done in any system whatsoever and probably gotten the same bad result. Kind of leads into my next point. WordPress is not just a pretty brochure maker. I know when we start out, we talk about WordPress as kind of a blog management system. It's a way of presenting information. But now it's so much more powerful than that. So if you have an e-commerce site, Notice that this conference is sponsored in part by WooCommerce. If you look at some of the functionality WooCommerce offers, getting down to the nitty gritty of products or subscriptions, it's amazing. I'm still learning everything there is to learn about it. I may never learn everything there is to know about it, but every new little rock I look under, there's something cool that I find that I can incorporate and make my website better. Are you maximizing the information delivery to your clients or customers? For example, I'm dealing with a website right now for a hotel in Norway. And they wanted a back-end booking system. Oh, no. Is something we're going to have to program from scratch, which is going to run off the cost substantially? No, there's an amazing hotel booking management system already created for the back-end for WordPress. It's $79. I've tested it because you never truly know what you may be getting. It works fantastic. 
client loves it. So you can now offer that availability information to your clients for a relatively low cost. Are you taking advantage of information delivery options? What about language capability? You, know, you don't have to suffer, and especially now, where many people speak multiple languages. There are very easy ways to offer multiple languages on the same website. Are you taking advantage of that so you can capture an audience that may not necessarily be your primary audience? Are you maximizing your event promotion and handling? You're offering events, conferences, presentations, whatever. Depends on what your business or organization does. Fundraisers. Are you taking advantage of some of the plugins that are available to be able to maximize the promotion and handling of those events? I always say this, think of ways to stretch WordPress. If you can dream it, you can do it. You know, it's right there at the front of Epcot. If you can dream it, you can do it. Same with WordPress. You can dream it, you can do it, and I bet you, somebody had already dreamt up a way to do it in a fairly decent fashion that you can tap into for not free, again, for a relatively low cost in comparison to what you would have to opportunity to develop that in a custom-made solution. So don't limit yourself. Hey, I would like my website to do this. And then research. You'll probably find it can be done. And that kind of leads to the next thing. Evaluate the best plugin. Now there are tens of thousands of plugins. And sometimes I like to tinker and I like to try. I find a plugin I'm thinking about ways to make my website better. What would I love to see on my website? Oh, hey, this is what it's like plug it. And so I'll back up my site, do what I'm supposed to do, back to skip, security management, etc. But then I'll tinker with the plugin. Oh, this plugin is horrible. This plugin does not work the way it's supposed to. Might not be supported, etc., etc. And so sometimes you stumble across the plugin. It's just absolutely amazing. Some obscure ones at that. So evaluate what the plugins are. Ensure the plugins are secure. Well maintained and well support. You know, take a look at their support history. Take a look at the comments. Take a look at the reviews. See exactly how well this plugin is being maintained and supported. So that you know if you have a problem or if WordPress evolves, this plugin will also evolve. Especially if you're becoming more dependent on it. Sometimes I just like to browse plugins for functionality ideas. Like I said, I like to tinker. But I look through, what are some of the latest plugins that are coming into being, and can they help me? Is there some way I can tap into this to provide more functionality to my website, capture a greater competitive advantage on my website? Some of that stuff's really cool, especially in the area that I love, the area of like augmented reality with WordPress. You're starting to see some plugins come into play on that. Voice capability to WordPress. Take a look at what there's out there, what's coming available, and say, can I use this to my advantage? Just look. Which leads to the next thing that has worked for me. Test or break stuff. Back up stuff first. Don't ever play with your live site without a backup. That can go very badly for you. Trust me, I've been there, done that. You don't want to be in that situation. Back it up. But then break stuff. If you don't exactly know how a plugin works, try it. It's actually very hard if you have a backup. It's very hard to screw up your site. Oh, you'll break stuff. But you can always get back to where you were. But small chunks. Do it in small chunks. Don't go making 100 major changes to your website at once. Then 50 things break, you don't exactly know what's causing the break. Good development concepts there, coding. And if you go back to coding 101, test your program in small chunks, debug in small chunks to see where the errors flow, etc. Same way with um, plugins and making changes to your website. Small chunks, but don't be afraid to experiment. If it doesn't work, refer to your backup. Start over. But by experimenting, by testing, by breaking stuff, you sometimes stumble across some great ways to improve your website. 
Get the customers to test your website and evaluate feedback. Well, customers will tell you exactly what they think of your website. Sometimes they will tell you this is the most amazing experience I've ever had. And other times, especially when you sometimes deal with my customer base, well, they don't hold back. They haven't earned the right to tell you exactly what they think about the experience. But that's valuable because we say it helps identify the pain points in your website. Say, okay, if they're having this problem, chances are many others are having this problem too. How can I solve this? Can it be solved? Don't settle for less than what you want. Your website is your key to business growth in many cases. Not the only key, but it is extremely important. Don't settle for less than what you think your website to do. If you think it can do more, insist that it do more. If you're doing it yourself, check it out. Google, research, do what you need to do, but don't settle. Don't follow the herd with your website. Build a website that works for you, what's best for your business. Just because someone else is doing something that may work for them, great. You know, I read about website trends and they said, oh, you know, some of these new fonts are becoming all the rage. That's great. My customers on my business website, they could care less what font I'm using as long as it's not 100% distracting. It's easy for their old eyes to read. They don't care about that latest font trend. What they care about is, do you have my hat? That's all they care about. I want to order my hat. Do you have my hat? I have a reunion coming up. So do what's best for your business. Don't feel the need to follow the herd. That's a quick way of just getting into a trap of nothing gets done because you never know if you're caught up with what the whole world is doing. Focus on your own business. Focus on what's you. Don't be afraid to get ahead of trying. One of the things that I've been trying to focus quite a bit on on the development side is incorporating the augmented reality and virtual reality, even in the some of our products. The ability to be able to display information on a ship based upon the badge, the logo, the crust of a ship that pulls up something with an app on their phone. Augmented reality, virtual reality, especially two, three years from now, is going to be all the rage. We're just now broaching the surface of what it can do. Don't be afraid, as a business, to get a hold of the trend and get ahead of them. All we learn. I am always learn. There's an immense amount of stuff that I'm still confused about, wondering about. Never stop learning for me. You Google, you read, you watch videos, you ask questions of colleagues and developers. I found everyone wants to share. I happen to be part of the WordPress groups in Gainesville, that's where my home base is. Mr. Corso, Sheila. We all share with each other all the time. We share with the community. Lots of communities have vibrant WordPress developers that are more than happy to help steer you in the right direction. Don't be afraid to wonder, how did they do that? When we have our WordPress meetups, we get a lot of newbies, so to speak, that come that are trying to do it for their nonprofits or whatnot. Sometimes the best way, even I do it, go to Google Developer Tools. How did they do it? This looks like a cool website. How did they do it? Go to Google Developer Tools, start looking at what they've done. Chances are you're going to find out what theme they're using, what plugins they're using. It's all there if you know where to look for. Don't be afraid to wonder and then dig and investigate and find out. Finally, give up. Garbage in, garbage out. Your website is the one aspect of your marketing, sales, and overall business strategy. Constantly creating content, constantly trying to improve the website, figuring out how to make it better, figuring out how to stay ahead of your competition. If you let your website language, if you're not constantly updating it, of course you're not going to get the results that you see. I think a lot of people, they sometimes approach a website to say, okay, I'm going to do this fabulous job of putting a website together, and then they forget about it. And they wonder why it hasn't done wonders for them. Always a living, breathing work of art, something that you constantly have to devote attention to to make it great. 
and embrace digital marketing. A lot of folks, a lot of small businesses, especially in the Gainesville area, they get this website, but they don't really know how to use it. How does it play in their digital marketing strategy? Got to incorporate it in the digital marketing. Now, if you're savvy about that, of course you know that. But when your business is starting off, things you don't always know, again, ask questions, read, find out about how to make your website part of your greater digital marketing strategy. If you're a WordPress developer, one of the things that from an end user I'll share with you and now I'll deal with clients on the development side, take the time to truly know your client's business. Every business is different. What I find with, I'm not going to generalize and say a lot of developers, but I'll say I found with examples of developers is that they don't take the time to learn a business. They have an idea of what they're going to do before they do it, and hey, this works for 20 other realtors in your space, this is going to work for you. And they may not realize what makes this realtor unique, or what they would love to portray that makes them unique in comparison to their competitors. They're giving you the same solution out of the box, five pages, three pages, a block page, maybe a standard pricing schedule. Look, take the time to know your business, your client's business rather. Be flexible, don't bring the biases to the project. Make it so it works for them. Be approachable, don't be superior. Sometimes, oh my goodness, they're asking me to do this and do that. That's good. That's good. The more they communicate with you, the happier they're going to be. The more they feel that they can communicate with you, the better the experience is going to be for them. Be prudent with the client's money and make sure your billing and project policies are well communicated. I've been in the startup shoes. Heck, I still pour a tremendous amount of money back into my business. I watch money like a hawk. And so I don't like to give money to developers. And I don't want to take money from clients if I'm the developer. Just for the sake of saying, I can do something fancy and I can do this, I can do that. Is it money well spent? Because when you are in the shoes of a startup or a small business, every dollar matters and that dollar is feeding their family Go on to help pay tuition at school, the family car, food for the dog, whatever. Every dollar is precious to a small business owner. So make sure that you're very prudent with what you're doing for that client to getting the best bang for the buck. Because ultimately, if they trust you with their money, they're going to keep coming back to you over and over and over. They're going to tell all your friends about you over and over and over. Just remember, their success is your success as a developer. Make them happy, they're going to make you very happy as well. Any questions? All right. Well, I appreciate the time. I'll probably hang out a little bit in the happiness bar if anybody has anything they would like to chat about or anything about my experience or things I found along the way. But I very much appreciate your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your experience here at Camp Jacksonville. Thank you.